uh, live as always, mate. Let's have a little look. Check on the old FD. Dave. Love Lord of the Rings. Beautiful singing voice. Let's have a little look then. Let's see if we've got anyone on. Let's have a look. We got. Are we live yet, Dave? Here we go. Dave, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for your reaction. Oh, so, oh, we're always live, mate. We're always live. <laughs> Here we go. We're live. There's Dave, isn't he? Awesome. Welcome, guys. Um, who's joined us then? Let's have a look. If you just joined us, do say hello, as always. Always nice to see who's on the live. Mark, he's um, back. You know, he's been over in Annapurna. He has. Um, we got Marky V. We've got Dave. We've got Jim. We've got Bri, of course. We've got Sarah. Um, yeah, Mark, how was Annapurna, mate? I, I, um, we, I, I noticed we just posted um, your Thorang La Pass. Um, mate, how was it? Let us know. It looked like a bit of a beast. Um, but yeah, here we go. We've got Dave Ribbington. We've got Jill. We've got Mick. Namaste to all of you. Mick, how you doing? Hope the back is recovered after that bungee jump, mate. Um, yeah, looked fantastic. I, saw the, I saw the bungee jump. He just was... Uh... Yeah, Island Peak didn't get him, so we thought, well, I'll try it. I'll try <laughs> jumping off a bridge instead, see if that works. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. No, honestly, um, it's been great sort of, you know, looking over the last season, really, um, you know, with all the all the different experiences and adventures that have been going on. Uh, obviously, you know, Mick nailing Island Peak on the Ultimate Island Peak. We got, um, who else we got? We got Marky V was on the Annapurna Circuit. Um, I know loads of you who are on at the moment. We've got Dave Rimmington, I know, has been out there. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Di, um, Di Rimmington, yeah, he went out there with um, yeah, his daughter who um, just embarrassed him. Just embarrassed him. <laughs> absolutely showed him up. But, um, yeah, he still made it. So, yeah, we'll give him that. He still gets a medal. Yeah, nice. Ooh, Mark, feedback. Ooh, I like feedback. <laughs> now mark it was great to um great to see you out there thanks for the the picture at the top as well with all the evertrek t-shirts mate that was amazing um cheers for posting in the group but yeah dave today then we'll um i can see you're in evertrek hq um, i am i am namche in the background in the background yeah namche bazaar i i've slept in that room there see that light there <laughs> that, that I, I was in that room with that light on and uh not any oh, yeah. not, no one can prove me wrong <laughs> No, it's um, no, I'm 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 at home again today. But uh, yeah, today we we were thinking about what we were gonna um, you know, what what today could be all about, and you know, we were uh, you know, looking at sleeping bags. We haven't talked about we haven't talked about sleeping bags for a while, and we thought, what better um, uh, what better subject to talk about? And I, uh, Dave, I know if there's anything to do with equipment, you get really excited, don't you? So we were like, yeah, right, uh, gotta do yeah, it. Yeah, well, you know, sleeping bags is one of the we don't we I think we've done one. We've talked about it once before. Once, and it yeah, was wow, yeah, a long time ago, right at the beginning. Um, but it's a good one, and it's coming up. It's yeah. coming up a lot in conversations. The more people are going, yeah. I mean, two years ago, we all, we sent way more people on um, treks than we do peaks. I mean, we did some peaks, but not that many. But they've become yeah. far more popular now, and more people are going to. They're doing their trek, and then they're coming back and they're saying, oh, "Okay, I want to go to Island Peak or Mera Peak or yeah." Aconcagua, and there is a, a change in the in the requirement for some of the kit, you know, particularly yeah. sleeping bags. So we thought, why not talk about it? And um, now Mick has uh, finally done it and come back. We'll start talking about it and give him all the help. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he'll love you for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, amazing. No, it, it is. It's it's one of those that it's it's so important because you know your night sleep or altitude. You know, there's there's no getting around it, and there's no beating around the bush. You know. It, you don't sleep as well as you do at sea level, put it that way. But if we can make it as easy as we can yeah. by being as comfortable as we can, um, then that's what we need to work towards. And, you know, sleeping bags is, is certainly one of the things. Sleeping bags, oh, I'll be fine. You know, I'll be, I'm in a tea house. I'll be this, I'll be that. But actually on some um, some of the ones we actually camp in, it can be really important. And I think, um, you know, over the last few years, there's, there's been a few lessons around, um, you know, especially around like maybe – going to high camps instead of just going for base camp or something back about the high camp. And, you know, you, you do need to have, um, you know, we're talking about like some of our trekking peaks now, like Island Peak, Mera Peak. You know, you do need to have, um, um, you know, suitable sleeping bags. Otherwise, you're going to struggle to get a good night's sleep. And if you don't have a good night's sleep, you can, it, it could, could, you know, affect the next day. And we yeah. don't want that. Um, you know, it's like on Killy Dave, isn't it? You know, when, you know, you're on the, 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 the foam mattress and you've got your sleeping bag. 
it's kind of a nice to, to retire to at the end of a tiring day to get a deep yeah, sleep as well. Um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Rob Jones here. He's in the queue waiting to check his bag in, in Kathmandu. Hopefully the airports in hey, Kathmandu, Rob. Um, the airport there is doing a little better than the ones in the UK, mate. And you'll be on that. Uh, <laughs> you'll be on the tin pigeon soon. Um, but yeah, you are right. So sleeping bags, you know, they, it's one of those things where you can yeah. pretty much get one sleeping bag that's good for all treks, you know, and it might be pro probably a bit more than you need for some treks, but, you know, it, it, it's nicer to have that sort of a bag that you know that if the weather comes in, even in Wales or Scotland, you know, you can be trekking in the day and it can be warm and then all of a sudden it can plummet at night. Yeah. So we have, so there is a good like trekking bag that you can have and a good sort of range, yeah. which we'll get into. And then you need to kind of think like you would with your boots, like you would with harnesses, ice axes, things like that. There's a step up from, you know, trekking to trekking peaks and climbing yeah. peaks. The higher you go, the colder it gets. It's, you know, it's ironic, get closer to the sun, but you know, it gets colder. But anyway, you know, any, those of you that have been, you know, um, near 6,000 meters and things like that, you'll know that it does get really, really cold, particularly overnight. Um, you know that it can be really warm and hot in the day when the sun's reflecting off the glacier as soon as that sun goes behind a peak or behind yeah. the hill the temperature will just fall um does, yeah. and, you know especially if you're on Aconcagua or something like that you know nearly seven days a meters the high camp there is really high um so it does make a big difference you gotta you gotta up level your kit then um yeah. to kind of match the conditions and we always say you know when people say there's no bad weather just bad equipment well it, the same is true not just for hiking in uh, the Peak District, but also, you know, Island Peak, Mera Peak, Aconcagua, Kilimanjaro, Lobouche, Pisang Peak, all of those. Yeah, nice, mate, nice. I just just reading through some of the comments as well. Uh, Dave Rimmington, apart from whizzing like a racehorse from Diamox at night, I slept like a log. Brilliant, mate, brilliant. It, exactly, some people do. And Dave, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you had a good sleep, yeah, because, you know, I've been trekking with, with, with people and, and some of our trekkers. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I was uh, Dave, I have said Dave Rimmington. I, was, I thought you were saying, Dave, I'm glad you had a good sleep because uh, we, we we need you to be on it on the tune-in. <laughs> no, sorry, Dave. Uh, Dave Rimmington now. I, I'm just going to call him Rimmington instead. It's probably easier, isn't it? I'll leave, I'll leave Dave out. Um, Rimmington, I was, was going to fit a catheter. Brilliant. Yeah, um, it's one of the side effects of, of altitude, isn't it? And, and, and Rimmington, um, yeah, definitely share your thoughts on that, um, you know, about taking Diamox. And, yeah, did you get any other side effects? It, it's if you've been part of um, the Tuesday tune in for a while, you would have heard the word diamox maybe mentioned a few times. But mm. um, uh, some people do take it to alleviate some of the altitude symptoms. Uh, but yeah, one of the side effects is it does make you wee more. Oh. Um, so <laughs> yeah, nice to hear about that, David. Uh, sorry, Remington. Um, yeah, and, and glad you glad you made it to EBC, mate. EBC. But right, yeah, David. There's a couple of things around sleeping bags because um, you'd be surprised, Dave. We've got some notes today. Um, Around <laughs> bingo cards that they're ready. Yeah, get your bingo cards that they're ready. Is there, um, a, sleep, there's, is there a sleeping bag bingo? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, there, there probably is, especially if it's to do with RAB. I'm sure there's a RAB, a, se a Cent 700 somewhere on that bingo card. Yeah, because so I've, I've given it to them early. That's the bag that me and you use. So um, It is. I mean, what should, should we start there? Should we talk about the RAB, a Cent 700? Um, no, no, but I have got the RAB, a Cent 700. Here we go. Couldn't leave it out. Look at that. Here we go. Out of the loft. Had to get it. No, no. The, what I wanted to start off is a few things that kind of the basics before you choose a sleeping bag. Um, one of them is obviously the, the correct temperature range, you know, it's where, where you want to start, really. Dave, I, I know we, we, we've had a quick chat before. We, you know, you've got all those ratings, haven't you? You've got the it's changed actually over the last sort of five to 10 years. You used to have the, um, the EN rating, which was like the um, was it upper limit, comfort, lower limit, you know, that kind yeah. of level. And then they changed it. Then. I think it was someone in the States changed it to ISO rating. Nothing to do with cameras. Um, so we don't need Steve. But essentially that then made it, 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 it kind of simplified it. So you've got, um, you've got your comfort, you've got your transition, then you've got your extreme. But in the UK, generally, you've got the old school EN rating. So if you go into Cotswold Outdoors, you go into Go Outdoors or any, any outdoor shops, you're generally going to see the EN rating. And this basically means that, you know, any, um, you know, you've got your, your, your seasons, you've got your one to five, um, you know, so you've got your ones used, you know, in the really warm weather, five, which are like expedition level, you know, climbing Everest level, essentially. We don't really need to touch on the five. It's mainly the three and the fours, Dave, on our trips, isn't it? Yeah. They're the ones that kind of cover our, um, you know, most of our trips. I mean, you know, once we do start doing Everest expeditions, we'll, 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 we'll go into that region. 
we'll start talking about minus 40 sleeping bags. But if you do get one of those, you're going to be a bit too warm and you don't want to sweat. Yeah. Because if you do sweat, um, you know, it's just as bad as, as getting cold, really, because you're going to feel, you know, your body's not going to like it and you could get ill. So we don't want that. We want to try and aim for, for the right temperature. So, Dave, with with the comfort levels and things like that, what's the, like, say I was going to buy a sleeping bag then. Yeah. You, would you choose the comfort? Would you look at the lower limit, extreme? What would, what would you kind of go for? Um, well, the, the extreme limit is one that it, it, it's relevant but yeah. ideally you don't want to be in a condition where you're having to use yeah. it so um basically yeah. the, it, it's more the 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 other ones you know the comfort and the just yeah. the uh, what's the middle one and remind me uh the lower limit the lower limit they're the ones that you really want to kind of focus on the extreme yeah. limit means um let's just say it was survival extreme, yeah extreme minus <laughs> 20. what yeah. that means is it'll probably be like you know say plus five comfort plus five yeah. um i've forgotten the middle one again <laughs> uh, and then it'll keep you alive in minus yeah. 20. So essentially, you know, you're not going to be comfortable. Um, you're not going to be enjoying yourself, but it's yeah. going to keep you alive when it's minus 20. So we don't really exactly. want to deploy that end of the spectrum. We want to stay within yeah. comfort and the other bit that I forget. Um, and yeah, so those are the two that we kind of look yeah. at. So generally speaking, the Rabbit Sense 700 and is that a minus? Uh, it goes down to minus. 15 or 20 i believe but it's, yeah. it's pretty much it's a, it's a four season um and it you know you can use that for anything i mean i've used that on killy toot cal everest base camp um yeah. you know, although you don't really need it on everest base camp if i'm honest because you're you're in tea houses like mick said there you know he's used he only used it once really because uh, you do get lots of blankets and duvets and stuff but if you're camping on some of the ones where you do camp or you're a refuge or you know it's an accommodation that maybe isn't a tea house or um a lodge then yeah it, you, you i've used that and it's it's been great i mean i i gotta be honest you know if you're in anything that's kind of above zero it's a bit too warm um you know so yeah you wouldn't wouldn't definitely wouldn't use that marrakesh put yeah. it that way yeah. <laughs> it's a bit too hot for that yeah i mean it's funny like i've used that rab ascent 700 on Pretty much all of my EBC trips, bar one, the first one yeah. actually borrowed one of our sleeping bags. You know, the ones we offer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, that was really good. It was. It, I'll be honest. It was probably it was a really big, lofty down one. So it did keep me warm. Um, yeah. But I ended up looking like a plucked chicken every time I got out of it. You know, <laughs> like all these feathers everywhere. Um, but the other one, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been on. I've used it. I think three times on EBC that Arab seven hundred. I think one yeah. of the times I just did. I never used it once. Even in Gorek Chef, it was really warm. Then I yeah. went back in October. I actually reached um, base camp on Halloween, 31st of October. That, was, um, that must have been scary. Yeah, really. It was. Sorry, I was ghosting you then. Uh, on, uh, yeah, mate, honestly, because it was October. It was a ghost town, honestly. No one was there. Um, but, uh, yeah, and that one, Brilliant. honestly, I really, I was really glad that I had that sneaker bag because it was really cold. Um, and it's just not, it, it, you know, not so much in the lower, but low boucher, Gorek Shep. It can get really cold there. Um, so yeah, so having like a minus 15 sleeping bag meant that, you know, it's obviously it's not minus 15 or anything close to that inside the lodge in the room. Um, it probably did go zero or minus one, minus two, but it meant that I was well yeah. within my comfort level, um, within that sleeping bag. So when you're trekking and what would you say? Minus 15, a good four season. Bag. Yeah. It, well, the thing is you, you can always, you know, when, when you've got like this sleeping bag, you know, you can always open it and use it as a duvet, you know, you don't have, technically have to be you know, wrapped up like a cocoon. If it gets really cold, you can. And because it, it leads us on to the next point, which is, is the sleeping bag fit. And then most, most of them, um, you know, especially like Rab, um, you know, you've got all the OEX, you've got all the different makes of sleeping bags. Some, they, they are kind of different fits. Some of them are wider. Some of them are, you know, longer than others. Um, <laughs> it seems a bit weird, but actually it might be worth sometimes. I mean, I, I haven't done this personally because I knew that that one was good. I'd used it before. Um, and the, I was quite lucky with the Rab 700 because the, the Rab range, I think, goes from 300 all the way up to nine. So the 700 is a good um, is a good four season sleeping bag. But essentially, you can imagine just you want to make sure with the fit that it's not too loose because the, your job of your body is to heat the inside of a sleeping bag. And if there's too much air around you, you're heating air where you don't really need to. But obviously, finding the balance, you don't want it to be too tight either because you want a little bit of space so you can, like, you know, you, you wiggle in your sleep. So there's a couple of things to look at when it comes to to fit. Obviously, we appreciate that you know you don't want to go into 
go out uh, into Cotswold Outdoor and literally try out all the sleeping bags and be rolling around on the floor testing them out. I mean, try it. And if you do, send us a picture. I'd love to see it. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, you, you, you do get some, because you get what they call square sleeping bags or you get mummy sleeping bags. I tend to prefer the mummy ones just because they, they tend to work better for me. Um, but, you know, if you're someone that, you know, slightly larger mm-hmm. individual, um, you know, you, maybe a, a square one might be, might be, might be better. Um, but so yeah. if you think like a square, <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. But like, yeah, if you if you're shaped like a Mister Man, um, <laughs> then, yeah. but um, yeah, or yeah. to be honest, my dad as well has to whenever he has a sleeping bag, he has to get an extra long, basically, you know, because yeah, he's he's yeah, tall, isn't he? Yeah, because if you're like six four or something like that, and he yeah. goes in a sleeping bag that's designed for someone like our height, all that will happen is you'll stretch yourself in, and then it'll just fold him in half um but uh yeah so you are right about fit though because it and it's about getting that balance between what's comfortable for you you don't want to feel like you're being suffocated by the bag and you want to be able to move your legs a little bit but at the same time you don't really want it to be too sort of baggy and billowy otherwise you may as well be in a quilt um and yeah you're going to have lots of space around you that's going to be you know it's not the the heat is not going to be concentrated around your body it's why when you see the sleeping bags on everest and the eight thousanders they are like a mummy sleeping bag you know and they're really thick and lofty all the heat is retained in the bag itself and that is quite tight around your body so it does make a big difference yeah and there's um there's some good questions coming in actually i'll i'll I'll, there's one from jill obviously i know there's a lot of others coming but I'll, i'll i'll pick this one up um hey jill um yeah it does mention would you recommend taking your own one um over to ebc rather than the ones you say you can you can you can loan uh, what's up with those ones yeah um i know we're talking a lot about like if you are going to buy your own here but of course yeah you can use ours um you know and they are suitable for your trip that you're on yeah um, any that you hire they're all going to be um especially in Kathmandu, they'll be ready to, to rock um you know for your trip obviously if you're doing anything that's higher like island peak uh, mera peak um, any of our trekking peaks, you know, you, again, the guide will know, okay, right, we're going there. You're going to need, you're going to need a bigger bag, essentially. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I, could, I couldn't, I was thinking of Jaws then. I know, I know. Do you know what? I thought I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, the uh, bags as well, which is the ones yeah. that you rent out. They're not um, brand new. They have been used by other yeah. people before you. Yeah. We do our best to keep them, you know, obviously if, if they need to be cleaned and stuff like that. But then, yeah. With down sleeping bags, it's not the sort of thing back in a in a in a laundry. So we do our best to keep them clean, but obviously they're not going to be brand new and they're going to have been used by other people. So quite often, one thing we should talk about as well, and is is liners. Um, yeah, liners which, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Which, which um, we we usually recommend. Usually the cotton or silk liners, cotton ones you can buy for about a fiver. Um, the silk ones are a little bit more, and they do add a little. They uh, you can basically you just get inside the liner, then you get inside the bag. So at least what you're in is nice and fresh and brand new to you yeah yeah um, yeah good point and um uh, but they do out uh, they do also make a big difference the liners with regards to the temperature as well you wouldn't it's particularly the silk liners right and they uh they can I lo- yeah i've used the silk liner a couple of times especially i, I think the first two ever space camp trips i took a silk liner and um yeah you, you know it's like if you have ever had silk you know on your bed you know on on your your, your bottom sheet and it's um yeah, it feels a bit cold when you get in. You're like, ooh, you know. But then after a while, actually, it's quite cozy. And what um, did you use? You camped on Penavan one time. Um, yeah. And I remember the weather on there was pretty savage and pretty cold, right? What did you use there? What was your setup for that one? Um, yeah. So if we're talking about like like the sleeping system, yeah, I had a um, an extherm, so thermarest extherm mattress, which was you know obviously separate you from from the earth. Um, then I use my um, Rabbit Ten Seven Hundred, uh, but I also slept in my trekking clothes and my down jacket. Yeah, it was about minus ten, eleven somewhere. I also without the wind. Once and me and you went canoeing, um, and we had to, we we made sure that we were really really well hydrated. <laughs> um, and if I remember right, did you either lose your sleeping bag or spill yeah, some beer on it? And you used a wetsuit, I understand, mm-hmm. and you as a as a survival mate. You got to use what you got. Again, uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> did you I was, did you wear it or did you just kind of like no kind of, no I, I, I literally put the sleeping bag over me like as if it was like the shape so if anyone walked in and seen that it would have been interesting but it was literally like you put it over your body so literally like, you just matched yeah <laughs> the shape of the well like, it, it worked i didn't die so happy yeah, <laughs> yeah that was back in the day 
Um, but no, yeah, I, we don't recommend taking wetsuits on, on these trips. Um, you know, no. maybe if we ever start a brand called Eversurf, brilliant, let's do it. Yeah. Um, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, great stuff. Yeah, so sleeping bags then. There's, there's a lot going on with sleeping bags, aren't there? So you've got the fit, you know, you've got the warmth. Um, and, but also as well is think about your clothing. Like when you've got, like we're talking here exactly what we're, you know, like going over space camp, going to Killy. Sometimes, you know, if, if it does get really cold and your sleeping bag's kind of at its limit, then yeah, do do chuck on some clothes. Like numerous times, um, you know, when I was first trekked to ever space camp in winter, uh, especially in uh, Lobuche and Gorekshep, you know, I slept in my trekking gear uh, with my down jacket on with two layers, two or three layers underneath. You know, you needed to do that in a sleeping bag with a duvet on top that froze. Um, you know, that can happen. So, yeah, the clothing is also a big one. Like on Killy, some people actually had some clothes that was their sleeping gear. So you can get out of your dusty gear, you can get into your sleeping gear, into your sleeping bag. Happy days. So think about your clothing as well. Um, you know, in terms of what you what you what you want to use. Some people though, Dave, and I know you you you've done this. Loads of Evertrackers have done this. They will just sleep in their trekking gear, yeah. get out, have a bit of a wash, and then carry on, right? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like generally speaking, particularly. So I've done this on pretty much every trek at least for a few days. Yeah. Where I'm not going to like. It's usually at the point where I've reached. I've used all my boxes. You know, there's no point changing back into them. I got to get up early. I'm going to be trekking and getting minging anyway. So I think, well, I'll just whip my boots off and get into bed. And then when I wake up, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I did it more on Killy, to be honest with you, because Killy, the the dust uh, is so fine yeah. everywhere on the mountain, particularly in the lower uh, camps, like Shira 1, Shira 2 particularly. Yeah. And um, and you know what it was like. Like we'd, we'd go in the tent and you'd have a wet whitewash. Yeah. And then the moment you touch something, you were you were you were filthy again. Oh, you were done. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like no point sometimes, right? Yeah. Talking of clothing, uh, Leah wanted to know what brand T-shirt I'm wearing. I'm not going to give it away because the ever trekkers, the ever trekkers should know it. Um, they should. They should know it. It's um. Uh, I think I think I think Jim Blues. Uh, Jimbo Blues. Jim. Hey Jim. Great to meet you last week. Yeah. It was a. Uh, uh, yeah. It's a black diamond T-shirt. Everyone keeps slagging off my North Face T-shirt, Sam, so I'm changing it up. I'm changing it up. I'm well, I've got it. Sherpa on today. I thought I'd wear some prayer flags today. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was so, every yeah, day yeah. Uh, two days ago, so I was like, I'm going to wear some nice nice prayer flags um, instead of my, my usual. Uh, but, yeah, Black Diamond, mate. Yeah, that's a rarity. You're right, though. I think you, you should be sponsored by North Face, the amount of North Face you wear. No, I'm not anymore, mate. I'm done. Really? The guy's called me out on it too done. often. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean no. <laughs> I've got too many T-shirts and it'd be a waste. Um, but, um, Brilliant. The problem is they, they 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 do this two for twenty five deal quite regularly, and I just I just like the T-shirts. You get sucked in, do you, mate? You get sucked yeah. But in. I'll pretty much wear anything. Like I mean, this yeah. black. I've got a couple of Sherpa ones. I'll be honest with you. I bought all my Sherpa T-shirts in Nepal um, in October twenty nineteen. Since then. I don't know whether my T-shirts have shrunk. Let's go with my T-shirts have shrunk. Um, but uh, since then, uh, they don't seem to fit me very well, and I have no idea uh, why. Yeah. Mate, mate, well, you, 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 you want to complain about that? I, I know. I, I, know, I, I don't know who to complain to, though. Maybe McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, well, good man, good man. Well, it's nice to see a new T-shirt anyway, mate. But, um, yeah, nice. Well, um, actually, it's quite old. I've had it a few years, but I just doesn't normally make it onto the live. <laughs> Rivington makes a good point. Should sign them and auction them off. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Maybe that's a good idea, actually. Sorry, Dave, you okay? Wear my old t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. There's some nutters out there, like yeah, uh, Marky V or Brian, that would buy your t-shirt, Dave. To be fair, you know they'd be good as you could use them for dusting, clean the car with them. <laughs> you could check your, you could check the dipstick on your car, but yeah, wow, <laughs> sign them, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. But no, um, I mean, when it comes to sleeping bags, that's that's, that's more of it. There are a few bits on the side like uh bry hit the nail on the head there around you know there are things that can make you warm obviously hot water bottles um or you can literally have a bottle that's filled with hot water um and then sleep with it so it's nice and warm in the morning because it's nice and boiled it's already purified and it's ready to drink um you know over the last kind of six years or something that that's what a lot of ever trekkers te- they learn that sort of halfway in to a trip and then by the end of it then they're like oh yeah you've got to do this next time so yeah, Brian, that's a really good, um, really good point there, mate. Yeah, it's good, to, good to bring that up. 
Um, but right, Dave, should we take some questions? Because we had a, a bunch in my email, and then obviously I want to go through um, all the questions that have come in. Do, do drop your questions in, guys, if you want any around sleeping bags. Yeah, obviously, think, anything um, goes. If you want to go any questions about the Queen, we can do that today because it's Jubilee week, right? Yeah, uh, I think uh, who's on the is it is it Rosie on the questions? If I lean over, yeah, I can see. I, this is really weird. Okay, you can see Rosie on the screen over Rosie's shoulder, and it's really off. But if I'm <laughs> yeah, Rosie, do you have to look at me with such dreamy eyes? <laughs> She'll wow. get that in about two seconds because it's a delay wait. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, and uh, yeah, questions. So, Charlotte... yeah, welcome back, Dave. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Charlotte Ranger has asked a question. I know she's on the live as well. Um, yep. Can you get decent ones in Kathmandu these days? A long time ago, you could get um, ex expedition ones. Then you could get uh, rubbish rip-off ones. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of North Fake out there. Um, yeah. Um, I, to be honest, I've not really seen, in my experience, <clears throat> old expedition sleeping bags. They tend to get reused and things like that now. And there's so much, so many, the expeditions are so big and numerous now that if yeah. they were there, the amount that get given away would be snapped up probably, you know, straight away. Um, but you can get sleeping bags in Kathmandu in uh, probably three ways. One, you can go to the local trekking shops and buy one. Yeah. Um, certainly there's probably going to be some, um, some fakies out there, but there is also North Face shops, there's mountain equipment shops. There's a lot of legit shops in um, Kathmandu. Um, but you can also borrow one of ours, and we make sure that ours are um, legitimate and uh, fit for purpose for whatever track you're on. Nice, mate. Nice. Yeah, there's, there's always a mix, isn't it, in Kathmandu? I mean, you know, Kathmandu, any any city you go in, you know, you're going to get your real, you're going to get your fake. I think it's more prominent in Kathmandu, definitely. There's, um, you know, over the years, there's always been that that classic North fake. Generally, you just turn it inside out and you have a look at the seams, you can generally guess. But you know what? Sometimes... Yeah. It actually does work. Um, it may not be uh, shiny and, and it might not be kind of up to the technical standard, but I'd say 80 or 90 percent of it is actually fine, Like especially the down jackets and stuff. You're not going to go far wrong, yeah. um, just from our experience anyway. And, you know, if, if it comes to that and, and, you know, you're struggling to find a decent one, just just use one of ours, especially, in you know, in Nepal. There's, there's no um, there's no fee for that. And you can use ours. And at least then, you know, they're, they, they're going to they're going to, you know, serve you well. Um, and like Dave said earlier, around the, the liner and things, if you want, because they are regularly washed, but obviously they are used. Uh, but yeah, good good question. Good question. Um, one came in. Let's have a look. Uh, Sam. This is from Sam Hartle. Uh, dropped in by email. Good to see you both back. Thanks, Sam. Uh, we're looking forward to our trip in Killy, September. When we're able to hire sleeping bags, duffel bags, we get there. I think I read it somewhere, but I can't seem to find it. Yeah, no worries, Sam. Yeah, so yeah, yes to both. You can um, hire sleeping bags at the Springlands Hotel. Um, there's a small cost for that um, when you're there um, because of the, the kind of setup we've got. It's a little bit different to, to Nepal. Um, but yeah, it's all exactly the same um, in terms of uh, your requirements. So if, you, if there's anything that you, you've kind of left or um, you know, something that you don't want to spend big money on, um, you know, maybe put it, uh, let us know before and we, we can just make sure that there's, there's things there. If you forget to do that, don't worry, because when you have a briefing with your guide, you'll make sure you've got all of your gear at the hotel when you have your briefing before you go. And if you don't, then it will go to um, the store, and then we can um, we can grab that gear for you. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's a small cost for that. Awesome. I realised I um I uh, I read the wrong question first. Or it's all good. It's all good, mate. It's all good. Jump the queue. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Next one that was emailed in was from Sarah Bell. Hello, Sarah. Yeah. Um, she says when purchasing a sleeping bag, she finds the thicker it is, the heavier it is, and the more space it takes to pack. You're dead right um and it makes it harder to pack anything else how can you reduce the amount of space in a, uh, a sleeping bag takes in your rucksack if you are limited on the amount of weight um in your bag when flying to the country of the mountain you intend to climb and without purchasing one on the well, other end yeah. so you are right unfortunately yeah. it's one of those keystone items that you have to take so you have to kind of be ruthless with everything else that you need yeah. generally speaking when it's packed into a bag like like the one andy showed up earlier like they're quite hefty um it's a big one yeah it is potentially possible if you undo the top to compress it down even more um yeah. and i have known people compress it down and you can get these straps that people put around their their, their luggage yeah, um, it keeps them compressed, and I have seen people compress them down to catch a strap so it stays as small as it can go. 
But unfortunately, yeah. it is one of those things where you have to kind of make do with the best you can. You don't want to arrive in country to climb a mountain with a sleeping bag that you don't, that's not suitable. So yeah. take the one that's suitable. Um, and uh, literally, then you just have to be ruthless with everything else. Do you need this? Do you need that? How can I pack this? How can I pack that? Um, and yeah, getting your weight right within the bag and managing your yeah. space is always a challenge. It's often the first challenge of the trip. Um, it can be done. And often it can be done by sacrificing certain things or timing when you get certain things. So a lot of people like to get everything they need right at the beginning. So if you say you're going to every space camp, some people like to go out shopping and get all of their snacks, everything they need right at the beginning. Um, I tend to get all of my snacks and things either in Lukla or Namshi, um, aside from the stuff I might bring from home. So that'll save weight and that'll save space. Um, you know, do I need those two fleeces? I'll just take one um you know do i need like my two beanies i'll just take the warmest one that type of thing and you'd be surprised how much space you can kind of save that way um yeah, but yeah other than just trying to really compress your bag um that's pretty much it unfortunately yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a fine balance isn't it dave i mean i know we've you know this question has come up probably more often than not this season i think with, with especially yeah. with all the, the people going out to every space camp because of the the airline requirement being um you know 15 kgs uh with your bag and your day pack um yes it's hard to to kind of find that balance especially because there's, there's some things that you do need um you know I, i'm gonna put a hashtag bag gate again after uh was it <laughs> a couple of months back um but yeah it, it's definitely you know you do need it at the end of the day and you know what if if you've got everything in your bag and it's over and you can't you know there's nothing you can leave yeah it, it might go off it might come on the next flight after you but at least you've got what you need. Um, you know, I mean, I, I certainly pack probably quite heavier than most because I take some of my camera gear and I'm prepared then. If that does get taken off, it's going to follow me. Um, I just make sure that I've done all I can in terms of putting everything in my pockets. You know, um, don't certainly don't carry much water in your bag when you're, you're getting it weighed. Sometimes, you know, they don't even weigh it sometimes. It's actually, I mean, most of the time they do, you know, 80% of the time. Sometimes they don't, you can get lucky. Um, in the, in the, the how many flights have I had? Six flights, five flights to Lukla and back. Um, yeah, five there, five back. I think there was only one time my bag was, yeah, it was 23 kgs on one time and it, it got on. I was quite lucky. Um, but I know there's ever trekkers over the last couple of years that have um, had the opposite. They're over and then they followed. And then, you know, sometimes that can cause a bit of aggro. Yeah, so, we, you know, we got to sometimes try and play within the rules that we've been given. Uh, there's certainly not by us we, we we don't want them too heavy obviously for the porters but if they're a kilo or a few over we can we can manage it yeah um but yeah there's certainly like sleeping bags you know it's, it's it's important you need it because yeah we go back to what we talked about at the beginning you've got that extreme rating you've got all the things there that you you know you uh you know you need it you don't want to be without your sleeping bag if you're, if you're doing certain things okay tea house um you know lodges in in, in on the way to have a space camp they're they, they're well supplied yeah. They've got the duvets, the blankets, but um, I think some mentioned before, you know, in the busy months, those blankets and everything get taken. There's not too many available. You know, generally you can find one. I've even had a guide, I think this was back in 2018, and um, yeah, it was quite busy, and I, I think they sacrificed their blankets to give to customers, which is a bit nuts, but he was like, they just wouldn't wouldn't say no. Um, they, this wasn't a customer of, of ours, but for someone else, and you know, fair dues to him. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're they're very good like that. They will make sure that you're not cold um, and looked after. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, good question. Though. Good question um, around that. Um, right. What's next? So I've, I've yeah, I skipped there. And here we go. We got uh, Charlotte Ranger. Charlotte again. We got um, how many degrees minus do you reckon for EBC? Um, I take it we were talking about the is that the sleeping bag rating, Dave? Yeah. Is that what it is? So what are we looking at? Like uh, minus ten. Yeah, minus ten. My, my, I think the rather sense seven hundred that we use for if we yeah. use on EBC, I think is minus ten or minus fifteen. <clears throat> um, I'll have to check the exact um, rating on it. Um, so yeah, by that, yeah, but minus ten would be fine. Minus ten, minus fifteen. If you yeah. go into um, a six thousand meter peak like Island Peak, Mera Peak, uh, or even Aconcagua, something like that, then you're going to want minus twenty, minus twenty five. Um, you know, you're going to need that extra stuff. A normal trekking sleeping bag um, is not going to be adequate for those types of peaks because if you yeah. have to stay at a high camp and the weather comes in, 
Um, you've only got a tent around you. You haven't got a lodge like usual. So yeah, it does make a big difference. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, Tom Massetto. Hey, Tom. You're telling me there isn't a Maindor sleeper bag? Maindor? What's Maindor, mate? I've never heard of them. I don't know. It sounds German to me. Um, yeah. Um, I've just made this read a question from Lauren Carter then, but it's, it's not. <laughs> uh, it's from Samantha Wright. Um, she's doing EBC in November. Um, would I be wise to hire one of our sleeping bags yeah. and buy a silk liner? Um, and of the subject, will you need crampons? So if you go into Everest Base Camp, you won't need crampons. You'll just need hiking boots. Um, yeah. And it's entirely up to you. You can hire one of ours or you can bring your own. If you think, you know, how many times have you needed a sleeping bag in the last year or two? You know, if the answer is zero, then yeah. rent one of ours because you're probably not going to use the one you buy very much and it, it, they're quite expensive. If you've needed a sleeping bag a little bit and you've used it and you do a bit of camping, then 100%, you know, I like to have my own just because it's familiar. It's always there if I need it. Um, and when if we're going camping or these other trips, I've always got one. Um, so I don't have to worry about renting one. But honestly, if you don't really use one in your normal life <coughs> and you want to rent one of ours, then save the money, save the space, rent ours, nice and easy. Yeah, nice. Um, Tina was asking, uh, do you bring sleeping bags for training weekend? Yes, you can. So on the accommodation we use on the uh, training weekend, yeah, we've um, uh, the one in August sold out. We'll be hopefully releasing a new date for the end of the year soon. Um, but yeah, they are uh, do bring your sleeping bag. Yeah, uh, even if it's warm. And you can just put it over you, just to, you know, like unzip it and just put it over you to sleep in it. Yeah. That's fine. They do. There's bottom sheets, pillows, things like that. Uh, but do bring your sleeping bag. We want to try and every training weekend over the last like five, six years we've we've ran. We we try and um, not, not not mimic as such, but get as close as we can to you know some of our trips. Um, so it's, yeah, it's quite quite a rustic combination. It's an old farmhouse that we've used. Oops, excuse yeah. me. Um, but yeah, we've always had really good feedback on it. Um, but yeah, definitely bring a sleeping bag. But when it comes to training weekends, anyone that's booked in uh, before about a week or two before you choose to arrive, we'll send you um, like some arrival information. So and in there is an equipment list for the whole weekend. So you'll you'll know exactly what you need. To, um, um, you know, obviously sleeping bag, but what else you need as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one actually. I can't wait. Um, Steve from from North Wales, um, he's coming down, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, from Aim Higher, he's uh, he's going to be guiding us for the weekend. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, um, it's going to be good. great, guy Steve. Great guy. It's going to be really good. Um, Bri, Bri, you've uh, come up with a really good thing. It's something I've recommended myself. Um, if you're not sleeping in your clothes and, you know, you say, so you, you know, and sometimes if you've had a really yeah. hot day, so, you know, if you've trekked and you've sweated a lot, you're not going to want to sleep in that base layer. You're going to want to put a fresh one on in the morning. Um, take some of the clothes with you into the sleeping bag. I do that. So I've even done it with boots before, but that's not very comfortable. But, um, you know, what if you just want to sleep like, say, in like, you know, if it were me, you know, and I was warm, boxes and T-shirt maybe. Um, and then you put your trousers, your base layer, everything in the sleeping bag with you. And then when you've got to put it in on in the morning, it's the same temperature you are. So you don't have to nice. work on because there's nothing worse than when you wake up in the morning and you've got to kind of get undressed and it's freezing cold, all the clothes in your bag. You know, when they go so cold, they feel damp almost, you know, yeah. and, uh, that that's that's not pleasant. But yeah, good idea. Take stuff in there. <laughs> Just look at my <laughs> Mick. The hydration package on the training weekend is very good. <laughs> yeah, mate, it certainly is. It certainly is. Um, yeah, we, well, we've got a couple of surprises this year. So, yeah, well, um, we're looking forward to that. Um, yeah, just going down. Uh, let's have a look. Was it? Uh, I think Mona asked about insurance. Um, if you get insurance refused, make sure you declare it. Um, potentially be refused insurance by companies. Yeah, I, I, I would, Mona. Just, yeah, you don't want something to happen. And then they're like, well, you didn't tell us. And, you know, this goes for any, any time, anyone like, yeah, I, I would, if you've, if you've been refused before on a medical diagnosis or something like that, anything like that, you do want to tell them, obviously they might increase the cost or, um, whatever, but yeah, if you go to them or anything to do with pre-existing or health, I would tell them. Yeah. Cause if anything happens then you, you don't want, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want it to sort of be difficult. Um, you know, you know what insurance companies can be like, um, they can be quite awkward, can't they? um yeah so yeah definitely mate I, I would do that uh definitely tell him yeah nice dave nice uh what's next um so having a quick look now um da, 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 da. Uh, so which, which question did you just answer then Ed? uh that was mona's i think oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah of course mona. yeah, mona's, that, yeah. That's the one I was just to answer. so the next one is from uh, uh davy rimmington um compression sack or no compression sack Ooh, um, yes. i mean if you're Love referring it. to the stuff we stuff our sleeping bags into i think mm. compression is always good 
Um, yeah. Anything that like keeps your kit small and tight, <coughs> excuse me, always recommended. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean, I it makes a big difference. So with my down jacket, which is the mountain equipment light line, I lost the um, the sack that it gets put into. So the yeah. only thing that I had to put it into was like um, a dry bag. But it meant that my down jacket was about the size of Andy's sleeping bag when it was all like when it loosened out. Um, so I actually just uh, nicked one of the um, the sacks from one of my other jackets, which was a size smaller. Um, I, again, I, I don't know why that is. It might shrunk. Um, and then I stuff it in there. Now, now it's about that big, and it just takes up yeah. much space. Also, if it is, um, if you're caught out and you forget to like pack something, I can use it as a pillow when I go to sleep. Nice. You know, good skills, mate. Good skills. There was an entire um, EBC trek where I used my sleeping bag as a pillow, um, <laughs> just because it was warm enough for the blankets and stuff like that. So yeah, that was great. Exactly. Um, just reading through here, let's have a little like. Uh, so I just going through some questions. Uh, what about sleeping bags and sleeping mats for Killy? Yeah, Ryan, right? Hey, this, that's Ryan Cook, isn't it? I was a, a competition winner, I believe. Um, our last competition back in March. Um, hey, Ryan. Um, yeah, good question, mate. Sleeping bags and sleeping mats for Killy. So, um, yeah, the uh, there are mats. Um, they're basically like foam mattresses. Um, they're not like Thermarest, you know, the blow up ones. I know there's loads of makes, but Thermarest is, is, is quite a popular one. Um, we did have some other trackers who use their own um uh, mats their own thermo obviously you got to blow them up each day you know altitude hard work trust me <clears throat> um but yeah so you can do that and, and they are better they're definitely more comfortable than the foam ones the mm. foam ones are fine you know um <laughs> dave i know you slept on them and i, I actually nabbed your thermo didn't i that one yeah, so I, and I, you packed said, wow, my, and. <laughs> I packed my thermo rest and he didn't and then when we get there you Maybe get one. these mats the best way I can describe the mats, do any of you remember doing PE in school and they put those mats down, um, you know, so you won't like hurt yourself when you land or something? They're like that. But if you yeah. imagine sleeping on one, they're not very supple. So you do sit on your bones. So yeah. I was sleeping on my thermo rest and blowing it up. And yeah, I, I, if you bring one, massive top tip, bring either a hand pump, a foot pump or a battery pump because blowing that sucker up once you get to around 4,000 meters is just far more effort than you want to. Anyway, and then one day I had a bit of a sore back. Andy had a sore back. I had a sore back just because mine is ruined. Andy had a sore back because he was sleeping on that mat. And then one day it was like, okay, you try mine. I'll, I'll, I'll just have it without the mat. And then I mm. slept better on the, the firmer one and he slept better on the air one. I was happy as well because it meant I didn't have exactly. to do it up. Um, <laughs> so like, but yeah. Yeah, it's I, hard work. Hard work at 5,000 meters. I know exactly. <laughs> I, I remember one time I blew it up. I had stars in my eyes because I was like, and um, but yeah, I think that yeah, I, I think they're really not don't really need one for EBC. Um, yeah. but Killy, anytime you're in a tent, uh, I'd highly recommend bringing one. The Thermo Rest, they're not the cheapest, um, yeah. but they pack up really small, really light, um, and they do go some way to retaining the heat as well. Um, so there is some technology in the Thermo Rest mattresses that kind of sends the heat. It's not lost through the floor. Um, yeah. It's actually retained and, and, and radiated towards you. Um, so, yeah, there is some uh, good technology in those mats, which are really, really good. Um, yeah, nice. Which nice. Thermo Rest mat did I? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, okay, and you answer a question. I'm going to go into No, no, my... I, I, know, um, I know what it is. It's the X-Therm. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Because it was, um, I, I was doing a bit of research this morning, and um, I've got, I've got two of them now, and yeah, they're really good. I'm sure it's the Exterm, which is a, I, I, they're about sort of 50, 60 pounds. They're, they're not cheap. No, um, more than that. Was it more than that? Was it? Well, yeah, according I, I, to this, I had the Thermo Rest Neo Air Exterm regular yeah, X-Term, size yeah. sleeping mat, which was yeah. fine for me. I was 140 pounds. Oh wow! How um, much did I buy? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I'll see if I can find it. Where did I order it from? I just ordered it from a website I found called Gainer Sport. So that's mine. Whoever Gainer Sports are, um, that's the one that I have. Nice. Yeah, they're really good, aren't they? It makes a hell of a difference. I've used that on loads of my wild camping stuff. Um, but some people do prefer like a hard mattress and things like that. So yeah, if you, if you don't mind sleeping on a hard mattress, use one of the foam. Um, yeah. The foam ones. If you do want a little bit more comfort, you know, do bring your own uh, like this. To, you know, some people just get on with it and they're like, I, I, you know, it's part of the adventure. 
but some people want to do want to bring a bit of comfort. And if that's the case, do bring do bring your own definitely. Yeah. Um, I think uh, was it Laura asking? It was Laura? Yeah, Laura was asking. Uh, can I ask about borrowing down jackets? Was planning to borrow Evertrack one, but I'm quite small, UK size six. Um, will you have any sit me, or would best to bring my own? Um, yeah, Laura, definitely. We we've had um, Evertrackers before, similar size, um, and they they use one of our jackets. You know, they might be a bit loose, but they were they were perfect for base camp. Um, I remember um, actually a relative of mine, um, Sarah, uh, come with us. When was it? November two thousand eighteen, and she's a size six, and she. Um, uh, she used one of the higher jackets and it was fine. Um, so from personal experience, but I know a lot of our ever trackers who are similar size um, have used those jackets. So yeah, yeah, you can you can borrow one of ours. Obviously, if you want to use your own, go for it. Um, if you've got a decent down jacket, then then yeah, do do bring it. Um, by all accounts, Gainer Sports, who I bought my mattress from, are a very good trekking company. Um, they must have been because I bought it from them. Um, and uh, I'm, I, I I like to check reviews and things. But I bought it on the 24th of November 2019, so it must have been an early Christmas present. Um, got an interesting question here from Gregory Clark. Interesting because he's writing it from the engine bay of a 1968 DAF. So I'm assuming that's a lorry of some Brilliant. kind. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm interested to see why, in the end, why it's a 1968 DAF. Is he restoring it? Let me know. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it occurred to you, is your sleeping bag okay for, the, for Nepal? It's a season three to four. Um, likely it is. I need to know specifically what type of sleeping bag it is because not all seasons are kind of created equally. Um, some four seasons that they'll be good for like minus five and then minus ten. So it's it, it depends on the brand, the make, the sleeping bag, the shape, the size, all of that type of thing. So let us know what it is and we'll be able to give you a more specific answer. But generally speaking, a four season sleeping bag is good enough for trekking in the pool. Yeah. Um, good luck with the, uh, the 1968 uh, gaff. Yeah, that's quite cool, isn't it? Quite cool. Um, sorry, just just pinging through the comments. Yeah, uh, where was it? Uh, sorry, I've I've lost it now. <laughs> just uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? I've literally because we've had heaps of comments, and I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, I think someone asked about. Yeah, I think it was Tom actually. Having I mean, uh, an air mattress, do we get still get a foam mattress as well? Yeah, you do. So if you want to use, if you want to put it on top of the foam mattress, you can. You probably won't need to, if I'm honest. Um, just thinking about you know, the height of it and everything, but go for it, mate. Yeah, Ex extra support. Why not? So which, um, which trip is he talking about there? Uh, Killy, Killy. Yeah. I just want to let you know that, you know, foam mattress. What's that? This isn't like a dreams foam mattress. No, no, you know? no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> just want to just want to let you know, Tom, that foam, um, it might be foam in there, but it might be might be too much of a grand word. <laughs> like, I'm thinking <laughs> more along the lines of like an extra firm foam mattress, perhaps. Um, hey, hey, Spud's on here. Well done. Ah, I see Spud. on Spuddery. Um, yeah, he made it to Tube Cal as well. It's great. That's two two people that have. Um, <laughs> uh, where was I? Right, right. You've got a self-inflating mattress for Killy. Uh, will they still inflate at altitude uh, where the air is thinner? Interesting experiment there, to be honest with you. Um, I've I've had a few self-inflating mattresses, and I've always had to add air manually to them. I've never found yeah, even at sea level. Yeah. Never, yeah. So, however, having said that. If you have a packet of crisps in your rucksack, as it gets higher, they do expand with the air pressure. So they maybe do. that might make a difference. Do you know what? That's an interesting thing. I'm going to try and figure that out. But um, yeah, I had a packet of um, like Cheetos, I think, in my rucksack. And they were in there for days as I was going up to EBC. And they started getting more and more and more. And then one day I sat down on a rock and uh, I heard a, shake, a, a sort of like, boom. <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah, everything in there was uh, Cheeto-y. Luckily, it's a spicy one. Yeah, the um, with it'd be interesting to test that because yeah, most people who, when you buy that and then you and you use it for the first time, it's not the first time or altitude. So it'd be interesting to yeah, if you took it to say four and a half thousand meters and then opened it, wonder what it would be like. Yeah, uh, it'd be a good good test actually. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I bet it'd like fly off or something. You never know. Um, but no, in, interesting experiment. We're gonna have to do that. Um. Let's have a look. Uh, Jamie, let's have a look. Hi, Andy. Dave, question regarding down clothing, sleeping bags. They puff back up to their original state. It's been crushed down. Um, not a stupid question at all, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've had down jackets and, you know, they are best kept like long term, you know, out as in, you know, at full full inflation. Um, talking about down jackets specifically, the sleeping bags are fine, like because of the way they operate, they, they tend to spend most of the time like that um you know like I, I don't really hang it out i mean 
you know, if you've got it packed for a long time, you know, once every maybe three to six months, get it out if if it's really long. But with down jackets, essentially, yeah, that the more time it does spend like that, it does use some of this inflation. I don't know why that happens, but over the years, like I've used, um, especially my Rab, I've had for several years now. Um, they don't actually make the the, the one we've got anymore. Um, but it's basically, yeah, you can see now because it's spent a lot of time, like crushed up, um, it's lost some of it, um, you know, some of its inflation, if you like. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but on, on a trip, you know, every now and again, when you're on a trip, you say you're out in the mountains, like every time I go like hiking in the UK, um, I'll carry a, um, sorry, a smaller down jacket in, in the summer. It gets windy, but in the winter, I use my big one, but that'll be um, uh, basically scrunched down in a, in a compression bag and it'll be down in my, in, in my bag. So, yeah, it does happen. And that's fine using it like that, but long term, I'd say definitely have it out. Yeah, I mean, mine, I've kept, I've certainly kept mine in its stuff sack for at least <clears throat> six months at the longest. You know, if yeah. I've gone from sort of through the UK summer and I'm not using it, and yeah. when you open it up, it looks horrible because it's all, it's, it's not lofty. Yeah, it's it's creep, all it? Yeah. But after a little while of wearing it, it will come back again. But yeah, like Andy said, the long term, if you're thinking of keeping it, and throwing it away for a year or something, um, yeah, it will make a big difference. I can see the comments that uh, we're, we're, we're losing them, and they're 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 falling down into uh, into butchery here. <laughs> I was going to say, I could even see Rimington. I've met a few mattresses in my time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, it's gone downhill. But no, um, yeah, good to see Spud, and Spud makes a good um, point as well um, uh, on air, basically using air mats that he actually used one on Killy, um, and I remember because I woke up. Uh, sorry, in the evening we just had dinner. I could hear him blow, blowing that uh, that thing up every evening, and I I thought he was gonna have a heart attack or something. I was like, "Geez, bud, calm down." Um, but yeah, oh, it cost him twenty five quid. That wasn't his sleeping bag. Okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Deeper debauchery. <laughs> but no, it just goes to show there are um, you know you don't have to buy um, the one that Dave said there. You know, one hundred and forty quid is, is obviously expensive for this piece of piece of kit. You yeah. do want to get cheaper ones out there. They won't last as long, but if you're doing, you know, um, just a couple of trips, um, I'm sure it'll it'll last you just fine. Yeah, a little top tip as well is bring some like um, duct tape with you. Yeah, um, because sometimes um, they do develop, particularly around the seams. Um, you can get little leaks and things like that. Um, and I had one before I bought my um, most recent one, where um, I think it was mainly duct tape by the end. But uh, but it but it would manage to stay up for a night, you know. So yeah, <laughs> I'm just reading about in, uh, exploding dolls now. Wow. I think I think they're talking about uh, Only Fools and Horses episode, hopefully. Yeah, so I, I, remember I remember that, that one. Goes, yeah, <laughs> um, Spud's put the link to the one he used as well. Cheers, Spud. Um, looking forward to catching up, mate. In July, we got uh, the, the Glencoe Challenge. Um, Dave, I realised we've been nailing the um, nailing the questions. There's something we haven't talked about today. Oh, really? Any guesses? Is it about um, her match? No, it's not about her match. It's no, about, about a little Madge. clip called Kilimanjaro. Hang on a minute. No, no, it's it's not that. Um, is it sure? about, are we giving away a free trip to meet the Queen? Nope, not the Queen. I okay. mean, you know, maybe next time. Yeah, you're going to um, have to help me out. What, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, so um, as, as you guys know, if you've been part of the community in a while, we like to do our competitions. Um, we, we have started um, uh, some of our um, kind of social posts and things earlier today. But, yeah, we are doing another competition launching today. Um, obviously, most of you on the live here are either booked in or are going on trips. Um, but, yeah, definitely um, get yourself in this one. This is Kilimanjaro. So doing another trip to Kilimanjaro for, for two people. Um, yeah, get yourself in. I will put the link into the comments. Or Rosie, if you're on the comments, um, I did put the uh, the link in Slack, if you can copy that over. Uh, if not, I will drop it in, just so you guys have got it, because the... Um... <laughs> is Sorry, she searching for the watching, link now? I think she was texting someone, and I just... So this is what I saw. I saw... Let's have a look. She's like, <laughs> someone said my name. Someone said my name. It's all good. I think, I think I've got it here. I yeah. think I've got it. Here we go. It's all good. So I just put the uh, put the link into it there. So that's the, the competition link. Get yourself... Um, uh, in board on, on board on that one you, if you've been part of the ever tracker community for any length of time you know there's always a good buzz around competition time yeah a lot of people a lot of people come into um you know find it out about kilimanjaro you know so we will be educating people around Kili. 
Um, obviously, the one we did earlier in the year was around Everest Base Camp. But yeah, definitely get yourself involved, guys. Um, yeah. For two people, even if you're booked in, don't forget, if you're already booked, you can still win. Um, so definitely get yourself in. And I know Bri has, has got a, an acceptance speech that he's wrote. He wrote that about three years ago. Yeah. So, Bri, you'll never know. Right. Um, <laughs> I know. I've got an acceptance speech. I named it every <laughs> single one. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but no, it's honestly been great. And yeah, definitely get yourself um, onto that, guys. It's uh, Yeah, we really love doing these competitions. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Um, I was chatting to one of the uh, previous competition winners recently. Um, yeah, we were just ah, talking nice. about, um, you know, what, what it meant to her and stuff like that. Yeah. She was telling me that it was something that she never would have realistically been able to do. Had she not was that won Kate, was it? That was Kate, yeah. Yeah, um, no. We were lucky enough to actually trek to base camp with her, and it timed out so perfectly because she arrived at base camp on her birthday. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think she even did some talks and some schools and things. Yeah, so it's amazing. And it, I, yeah, it really is great. I do love it when you just, you know, someone that perhaps might not have been able um, to kind of fit that in to their life all of a sudden gets handed it to them and then who knows what yeah. happened. You know, I worked really well, she's, short. She's a life coach now. She's, um, you know, I mean, she's, you know, it changed. I'm not saying that's the only reason, but I know that when we, because we, tra I trekked her with Kate. She's a fantastic person. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I know, uh, was it Ryan's on here as well? Here he is. Yeah, happy EBC competition winner here. <laughs> no, great stuff. Yeah, it's, it's so nice to, you know, see people, who, you know, sometimes it, it can be a, a game changer, a life changer. Um, so yeah, get yourself in guys, get yourself in. Nice. Sophie's here as well. Met Sophie at, um, she came to visit ah, us. Ah, Sophie. Hey, Sophie. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great to see you booked in. Yeah. Um, I, excited. She's doing back-to-back -back trips. I know. I was trying to bully her friend into going to Machu Picchu, but um, yeah, he was, a, he, was a, he was a tough cookie to crack. So, um, yeah. <laughs> no, it was. It was lovely to meet you. And great to see you. Um, you know, can't wait. To, I know you're on uh, Annapurna and Everest Space Camp, literally one after each other. That is an awesome idea. Yeah, so, um, so well done, Sophie, on that. I know it's next year, isn't it? But, uh, yeah. Great to see you booked in on that, mate. And um, yeah, anything you need, give us a shout. But yeah, Dave, I think that's it for today. I know we've we've covered pretty much everything. Any any final thoughts, mate, on um, sleeping bags? Um, there's so many jokes about bags and sleeping. But no, I, no, but no. Um, you could go deep. I, I I know those jokes, Dave. I can I can see I, in your I know, eyes. You're dying to do it. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's more for do you know what? It's the if you want to hear him, come visit us at Keswick next year and we'll have a pint <laughs> now. But no, honestly, yeah, with, with your sleeping bag or any type of equipment, yeah. um, the most important thing is to do a little bit of research. If you can't yeah. be bothered to do the research, drop us a message and we'll do it for you yeah. and give you the best advice that we can on um, you know, what to bring and what's suitable and stuff like that. Also remember that you know, you when you go there, you are gonna meet your guides. They are far in a way bet more expert uh, have more expertise um than myself so um yeah they'll be able to give you all the advice and help you need um yeah other than that um look after yourself and each other yeah definitely yeah enjoy your jubilee weekend as well i have whatever everyone is up to i know it's a, a double bank holiday thank you for the queen for that lovely extra day um dave you you so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Or... so if you mention that i've got to stand up ah. <laughs> Put your North Face T-shirt back on, mate. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, great. So it's been great, great live. Um, yeah. Um, I hope that's been useful today. Um, any questions that come in on the back of this, um, just drop us a message, and yeah, we'll catch you guys next week. Ah, uh, Jane knows. Jane knows. She got it. Oh, really? Jerry, is that from Jerry Springer? Yeah. So we signed up wow. all the big Look at really? and each other. So we signed up every one. Of them. See if anyone knew it. Jane got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, mate, that is niche. I, I, I gotta be honest, I haven't seen it for quite a long time. No, but, have I, but I, I, I Jane, remember that. Well done, Jane. Well done, Your Majesty. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it is> <laughs> Very good. All right, take it easy, guys. Bye. Bye.